What's up guys? I just had a wonderful session with one of my Patreon students and wanted to share the lesson with you. They asked about creating more retro sounding synths in their arrangement. They had a wonderful track, but we're using digital VSTs and blending that with acoustic sounds. Sometimes these two characters can be a little bit juxtaposed. And what we want to do is manipulate that VST into sounding something that is more analog. To get closer to the sound we want, we basically want to create some imperfections. I think it's a wonderful topic on sound design and figured we'd do it together today. So in this example, let's just start with a drum loop. The reason for this is we want to have some context for our synth. The groove here is actually quite bright, so we can start by just rolling off some of the extreme highs of that drum kit first to just get it into a similar space to our synth. This is the only change that we're going to create to the drum groove. If you don't have time to follow the tutorial, don't worry, I completely understand. We've got a lot of plugins to add. So if you want to skip the cue and just get your synth to sound in more analog and retro, I've got a handy rack that I've just added to the Patreon, which you can download today. With the synth, we're just starting with a sine wave chord progression. Let's get to making this sounding more analog. Straight off the bat, we're gonna choose the second oscillator and we're gonna manipulate this sine wave. Don't worry if you don't have these options in your VST, you can just start to increase the volume of maybe a square wave or a noise oscillator. That's all we want to do is essentially add a little bit of gravel, a little bit of noise distortion to this first sound. So I'm gonna set this sine wave to classic and just increase the pulse width a little bit and the sync. That adds already so much more noise. I'm gonna turn this up an octave and then bring the volume down and start to increase it. I think I'll leave it at like minus 22 for now, but I do want to add an EQ so I can always look at the sound. We're gonna use the filter here, but keep looking at the harmonics inside the EQ. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. We're just rolling off the extreme highs. We don't want this sound to be super bright. From here, what we can do is go over to the matrix and increase the pitch on LFO1. We're gonna set this to 48, come back to LFO1 and decrease the amount. Again, if you don't have this with your VST, you can just add vibrato. I'm gonna leave this on about 0.2, but increase the rate. We just have a little bit of wobble there. It's a little bit imperfect. The first effect that I'm gonna add might actually be a surprise, and that's the doubler effect. I'm gonna take the amount all the way down, increase the warmth. Warmth in Ableton adds distortion and filtering. So again, it kind of exaggerates that analog feel. Turning the amount up to about 20 to 30%. I'll then take the dry wet down to about 20%. I'll then add Redux, which gives a more down sampled feel and introduce some extra harmonics. Don't worry, they won't be that exaggerated soon. We're just gonna take the dry wet down. Somewhere in the 30s is fine. And then I'll add a little bit of extra filtering with the EQ8 that we added here. We can even boost some of the harmonics here. From here, I want to add OTT. I like to use Exfer's free OTT because I find it just a little bit easier to use, but you can also use Ableton's own OTT preset. I'm gonna turn upward percentage down and downward percentage down, and then use the high mids and lows just like an EQ. I take everything out to begin with just so we can listen to the highs. I'm gonna boost that a little bit and just increase the mids to about quarter of the way or just over. The lows, just a tiny little bit of low. I'm gonna take another EQ8 because OTT adds such a lot of rumble that we just wanna roll that off. From here, I'm gonna add Chorus Ensemble. 
but I'm gonna take that amount way down and the same goes for the rate. We can increase the warmth a little bit, but I won't do it as much as we did with the doubler. And then I'm gonna add a compressor. We wanna have some instability with this synth as if another piece of hardware or instrument was interacting with it. So down here, I've actually doubled up on my kick drums and we're just gonna side chain to those kick drums, turning the attack all the way down and the release all the way down. I wouldn't normally be this extreme with the attack and release, but we don't care about the clicks and pops this time round. I'm gonna set my ratio to about two to three and start to pull that threshold down. Super subtle stuff there. And to make it even more subtle, I'm gonna add some Valhalla reverb. Again, you can use whatever reverb you like. The Valhalla vintage verb we don't need on concert hall. We're gonna set it to dirty plate and we're gonna take that decay way down. Something like 0.8 is great. We'll cut off some of the lows and decrease the size a little bit. And then take that mix down. Before, after. Again, it's super subtle, but will just allow your sound to drift over that compressor a little bit more. So right now I'm happy with that first sound, but we're actually gonna duplicate it. This is gonna be our second sound and I'll color code it just so we can follow along. With the second sound, we're gonna keep it very similar, but we're gonna dive into the piano roll and pitch it up first of all. Outside the piano roll, we can actually increase the redux a little bit. When I dial in the rate, I'm just trying to find a nice harmonic that speaks to this chord progression. So you may have to experiment a little bit with your own. With this EQ here, I'm gonna be a little bit harsher on the filtering. Let's adjust that redux a little bit. That's nice. And then the last thing that I'll do is add a line delay. The line delay will make sure that this sound appears a little bit wider than our main sound. I'll take that up between like 14 and kind of 21 milliseconds. What I can do now is pair it with that original sound, but first I'm gonna take it way out of the mix so I can sort of bring it up slowly and find that sweet spot. Here's our original sound. And here's our second sound. We're gonna duplicate that original patch once more and I'll color code that once again. With this synth, I've taken all of the plugins off and we're gonna start at the beginning once again. With oscillator one, I'm just gonna change this waveform to, I don't know, some kind of instrument. Let's choose like the strings. From here, I'm just gonna choose a sound that I like using the wave position. That sounds good. And then I'm gonna set this synth to mono, so it's only gonna choose one note. I don't want this roll here, so I'm gonna quantize this to the grid and make sure that everything plays in time. I'll also set these to legato, so we don't have any dropouts. And then I'm gonna change the amplitude, so we're just working with the decay. And we'll have that fade in a little bit. That seems to work for now. We might adjust the decay later, depending on what it sounds like with the synth. Envelope two, we're gonna choose a similar shape. It's gonna have an immediate attack and an even shorter decay, because in the matrix, we're gonna assign envelope two to the pitch. We'll adjust that all the way. Now I have this pitching effect. So just start to bring that decay back. So it's more like a kick. And then I'll start to bring in and adjust some of these same effects. So Redux maybe, that's sounding nice. Don't think we need OTT chorus, lovely. And we don't need the compressor this time around, but with Valhalla, what I'm gonna do is have a really long decay. Wonderful. We'll just adjust this EQ8 a little bit. So it's a higher sound. Wonderful. We can even take that up an octave if we want to. That sounds nice. 
And again, take it all the way out the mix and bring in the things that we've heard before with the drums so we have context. I said we might adjust that decay and that's absolutely what we're going to do, amplitude. There we go. What we've achieved by adding that third layer is make our synth sound a little bit more complex with a new sound that is built into our synth, similar to that of a Juno or another synth coming out of the 80s. From there, that's pretty much it. But if you're working in Ableton, what I would suggest is grouping these patches. You can just go into each track, select your instrument, scroll to the end, select your last device, and then Command G. That will put everything inside a group. And then what you can do is drag that group into an instrument rack, open up the chain list, grab your second instrument, copy and paste that in there, and then your third instrument too. And the only thing you need to do is reset the values, zero, minus 17, and minus seven. So zero, minus 17, and minus seven. That way you can save your retro synth and you won't have to go through all this rigmarole in future you already have it stored. I hope this was interesting guys and helpful. Like I said, if you just wanna download a retro analog rack, you can do so from the Patreon today along with like 200 other plus exclusive posts, downloads and templates. If you wanna see something similar or different in the future, just let me know. For now guys, be well, and I look forward to seeing you next time.